friends, and welcome back to episode 11 of the Boxerville Homestead. I can't believe it's 11 already, but anyway, my name's Carol, and today is March 31st. Hard to believe tomorrow is April. I can't get over it. Um, I am coming to you from the Pacific Northwest, where I live with my husband, John, and our two resident boxers, Chance and Sophia. And today, they keep saying it's going to rain, and it hasn't yet, and we keep getting bright skies, so I'm hoping the light is good. And you know what? I know something. I put this off so that I could use the microphones that I forgot to <laughs> charge in week one and two, so I brought them downstairs because I'm coming to you from the vault again today, and I brought them downstairs about 11.30 to charge them. And so just fiddle farted around the kitchen, fed them some lunch. I did a little knitting. Oh, and I filmed tomorrow. Well, I got a snippet of tomorrow's April 1st daily vlog, which I'm going to try to do. We'll see. So I hope you join me there as well. Same channel. It'll just say, I guess it'll just say April vlog. I have no clue what it's going to say. You guys, if you've been back, thank you. If you're a returning viewer and if you're new, welcome. And I hope I don't freak you out from the start. This is me. I'm a little scattered. I am an ER nurse and um, I can do a lot of things at once. And you have to, to be able to be a good ER nurse. So, and I've done it for a hundred years. Um, what have I missed on the intro? Uh, oh, you can find me on Instagram as Boxerville Homestead and email me, which I've had some fabulous emails that just tickled me to pieces. One from Lynn in, I'm guessing, England. And um, like I told her, it was like getting a note from a friend. And I've had some more suggestions on summer tops because I'm still stymied. I'm still having a rough go at deciding. And here tomorrow's April 1st. Uh, where else can you find me? Oh, Ravelry. I am Knit and Nurse. And I'll put that also down below. At, um, I really suck at keeping up on it. I am poor. I probably haven't put anything in there in a few years. Um, maybe I'll go back and try and do that. And I need to move a lot of my knitting pictures from my personal Instagram account over to the Boxerville Homestead so that you guys can see that I actually do knit. And from now on, I've been putting, I'm starting to put my upcoming projects, but I've been a knitter for, I think I figure probably 50 years. I was taught as a child and I am looking at 59 in the face come June. Can't even believe it. Today, we're going to have no FOs, um, not even a hoe. <laughs> it's been, I feel like I've knit a lot, and you will see I have been knitting quite a bit. Um, but we've had beautiful weather in the 60s, like upper 60s, couple of days. And um, my husband even screenshot one time, one day, I think it was Wednesday, from work. And it was 67 where he was working. So that was pretty cool. And starting to get things going in the garden. So it's a busy time of year here for us because, as I've mentioned in the past, we, we have a huge garden and we can a lot. Um, I'm going to try to get into what I'm reading a little bit, really what it's what I'm listening to because I pretty much do audiobooks. Um, it's just, I can't read and knit. I, God love the people that can do it. It's just, I can't do it. <laughs> you would think I'd be able to. So today, let's get started. On the needles, I've mentioned in, um, you know what, no, let me tell you what I'm drinking because I'm going to have sips of it. My throat is dry already today, and I don't know why I haven't talked to anybody but myself <laughs> and the dogs. So um, this is one of my favorite, over, well, you really, it's hard for me to find it here in the store. I do order it, and it's kind of funny now because it's the Prince of Wales, um, flavor and it's black tea but if I feel like I need a pick-me-up in the afternoon and it's coming on half one here so if I need a pick-me-up this is really a yummy tea with a little cream um, but I guess now it needs to say the king of England and not the prince of Wales because our prince of Wales is now um, William yeah so that's what I'm drinking let's have a sip and we'll get going okay as I've mentioned in past I knit my husband wool socks 
He doesn't wear him to work. He wears these goofy knee high. My poor husband. I pick on him so much, but I love him with all my heart. He is a goober. Um, anyway, he wears these long knee high white socks with red on the top of them to work. Summer, winter, it doesn't matter. I don't even think they're wool. And they're so hard to find in there. And they're expensive. They're as much as a skein of wool, truly. Anyway, so I knit him socks that he wears otherwise. Um, going out, he won't wear those. I mean, he'll wear socks that I've knit him, but he really loves these wool socks that I make. I, I do my own pattern. I don't do, it depends upon the wool and the weight. I should sit back a little bit. 52 stitches. And then I just knit, and this is out of Yoth yarn. It is the daughter. It is a worsted weight. This is natural chocolate, natural vanilla. So I just knit and then I knit. And when I get tired, I start the heel. Generally I do an eye of partridge heel. This is a somewhat modified version of it. Um, I mentioned, I think last episode. Now I'm doing a try on this one. If he wears a sock out anywhere at all, it's gonna be right in here where his shoe hits it for some reason. <clears throat> so, and it's where the heel will meet in here. So I'm giving a try this time. I knit these on a US five, this part, uh, 3.75. But with this, and they're the same weight wool, worsted weight when I switched to the vanilla, I combined it with, um, let's take a look here. That's the off. And I don't have it in here, but it's a mohair. It's a Drops Kids. Is it a mohair or an alpaca? It might be a blend. Anyway, I combined it and then I'll do it with the toe as well. I did go down a needle size to compensate for the fabric because it's gonna be heavier. Um, so I went down to a US four, I believe, or did I go down to a three? I don't remember. Uh, I'll try to remember and tell you next week. And then everybody does this, right? I'm not the only one. When you knit with mohair, silk, some kids, I mean, just things that are like tangle and nasty really easy, you put it in a baggie, right? And leave it in there to pull it out. I'm sure this is not nothing it's probably nothing new to anybody else but in case there's somebody new truly put your mohair or your kids whatever you're knitting with that's this little cobweb stuff like this in a baggie and then just kind of zip the edge a little bit it won't tangle i promise i promise you if it tangles i'll come and fix it for you how's that it doesn't it's amazing and I'm off track. I'm not sure what I was telling you. Anyway, John socks. So still have the foot to do on this one. I knit them two at a time always because I lose interest way too quick with the one sock syndrome, just starting to pick up stitches. And then I've got the long, wide Fred Flintstone foot. But first I need to do the heel on this one. So I'm down to the point where I will, what the heck is on there? Something's on it. Um, where I will start the heel, flap, gusset, turn it on this one. So this, I will pick this up probably tonight. This one's going to go and sit down until I get a heel on this one. So those are John socks. Like I said, no pattern. I've just knit so many of them over the years. Remember, I've had the boy 37 years come September, so I can knit for his foot. You know, you love somebody when you'll, he's a 12 and a half, like, Triple E, I think it is. Wide. Wide as it is long. Okay. John Socks. I am also still <clears throat> knitting. Oh, you know what? I wanted to tell you one more thing about the heel. What I do, when I do an eye of partridge or when I do this, you know, generally they tell you on the sock, you slip the first stitch, knit one, slip, knit, slip, knit, slip, knit and you turn your fabric and then you slip the first stitch and then you purl across. Who likes to purl all the time? I mean, I don't mind it, but who likes to purl all the time? I don't do it that way. I slip my stitch. I knit that sucker clean across. I turn it around and then I slip, purl, slip, purl, slip, purl, slip, purl. He 
get the same thing. You really truly get the same fabric, but you're not doing all those purl stitches and it's faster. I hope that made sense. If it didn't, leave me a comment um, down below and I'll try to write out somewhere in the comments about how I do that and then give it a try and see what you think. And if there is a noticeable difference, I haven't noticed it other than the fact I can knit a flap way quicker. Okay, next is the Jelly Roll Blanket by Kay Jones of the Bakery Bears. I haven't got very far on it from last week. You'll see why. I've been busy on other things. I Here is my progress keeper from last week. So I finished. And this is where Sophie was knitting herself, if you watched last week. Um, so I got this, this, up to here. I was hoping to have at least the second row completed, but I don't. Oh, you know what? Some, and this is like in a break in the middle here. Somebody asked about my tattoo on my ring finger. This is actually my left hand. I don't know if it looks that way. Um, and it's terribly faded. But John and I have our wedding rings, well, our initials tattooed on both of us. We've done, we did it years ago and mine's faded terribly. I need to have it redone. Um, with his work, he can't wear a wedding ring. Just the danger of him losing a finger. He runs heavy equipment, a uh, great big excavator. He calls it a shovel. So if he were to fall, and he has actually broke his arm once off of it. It's not a small excavator. It's big. Um, you know, it could tear his finger off. So we had him tattooed and it's actually... That's a J, and then the K goes into the J. So John and Carol, J and K, because I'm Carol with a K. Back to the jelly roll. I was hoping to get it up to here, the second uh, done, but I didn't. So I'll move the progress keeper in, hopefully. But it's, I mean, this is a big one. I've mentioned, I think I'm five foot five, and I wanted it to where that it would go to my feet, and I could still pug up around my neck like that. So that's where I'm going. Um, on the first row, and I'm hoping to do it on the second, I've got a good start on the second. I've been weaving in the ends uh, before I started this row. So that's the plan to do it again. Fun knit, mindless, good TV knitting, Netflix knitting. Oh, does anybody have any good Netflix room? Like things that you watched or series or we just watched, finished the Waco thing last night with um, Koresh. I actually had a friend that was shot in that, not a friend, a friend of mine's brother that was actually shot in that, but he survived. It's kind of why we watched it. Anyway, Kay Jones of the Bakery Bears, and it's fun, and I enjoy it, and I encourage you guys if you've been on the fence about it. It's great mindless knitting, car knitting. It's good. I like it. <clears throat> okay. What I've really put my mind into this week is the Easton, what is it called? Easton Striped Pullover. And it was a collaboration with Lion Brand Yarn and Two of Wands, T-W-O of Wands. I'll put it down here and I'll link it. I don't even know how I saw this sweater, but I did. And I didn't pull it up and I meant to. And it's April and I'm knitting this big old sweater, but it's super cute and living here in the Pacific and I see it's just starting to sprinkle living here in the Pacific Northwest. I'll still get wet. I'll still get wear out of it maybe for another month and it'll be great for camping like evening times, especially if we're at the ocean um, because we do live we're about two and a half hours to get to where we camp on the ocean. So this is and I'm doing exactly the same yarns, everything that they chose because I think it is super, super cute. I guess I could have just put a picture up on it, but mm, there. I love it. It's boxy. It's cozy. I don't know that mine's going to be as boxy as that, only because it's not big boxy isn't something I would wear. But a little boxy is something I would wear. So... Since I saw you last, which was last week, I have the back done. 
And again, not much shaping. It really needs blocked because it's rolled in. I did a one by one twisted rib on the bottom, Norwegian or German, which one is it? Cast on, I'll put it in the description. Um, I noticed that I can't count. You're supposed to do six rows. It's a free pattern. If you, there's a way you can buy it and there's a way that it's free. I printed off the free portion. Um, I noticed that I can't count. This should be six rows. I did seven. <laughs> so my big dilemma right now is, do I, sorry guys. Sorry about that. I don't even know who that is. Um, my big dilemma right now is, do I want to do the collar in this color, which I think I do. I, And then it will be not the same as the button band, but I might want to do that. The next dilemma is, I may sneak this and make a cardigan out of it. I don't know. I'm going to try it first like this, and then I'll go from there, because I'm not exactly sure. Anyway, the back is done. I love the colors. The front, I need to read the directions again to see how far, but the front is this far. It's only to the first remember what color this was called to me it reminds me of a like that ochre gold color kind of anyway I'm hoping to have this done like maybe tomorrow even it's fast knitting girls and gentlemen I hope there's guys I don't know if there is yet but hey we are over 130 people here I can't even believe that when it hit 100 I was like because I think last week it was in the 90s so I think we've gained like 40 people and um, almost 2,000 hours of view time. I can't even believe that somebody would watch me and listen to my scattered head for that long, but thank you. Um, anyway, this yarn is the Hue and Me yarn and by Lion Brand. It is, as I mentioned, it does have, it's an acrylic wool blend. They call it a chunky wool blend. I think it's like 80-20. Yes, it's a number five. I'm knitting it on size 10 needles. I did the button band on size, boy, it is really raining now, <laughs> on size nine. Um, and it's fun. I like it. I can't wait to get to the, I can't even believe I'm saying this. <laughs> I can't wait to get to the sleeves, to the striped portion. I think it's going to be just super cool and because I love that goldy, ochre color. It's one of my favorites. Okay. Is that all the whips I have? <clears throat> I think so. At least active things that I'm working on is what I have. Now, I am still, hey, I did a swatch. <laughs> I'm so proud of myself and I soaked and blocked it. That is a miracle. <clears throat> I apologize for my allergies right now. And I even took an allergy tablet, but it's obviously not helping. <clears throat> so, I mentioned that I want to knit, I have to look the name of it up. S-A-Y-R-E, and it's from a library book that I checked out. And I will put the name and all the information down here. Well, look at this, I knit a swatch. It's not a very big one. I know it's not four inches, whatever. It's more than four inches wide. It's just not long. Hi, Chance. I started with down here with size five and you can see the difference, I think, in the fabric down there. It's pretty see-through. It's not my jam. I think if I remember right, the pattern calls for a size five, US five, or it could even be a US six. That's too see-through for me. So then I knit a four, which uh, it's hard to tell. You can't tell in here, but it's the middle. It's like between my fingers in here. And I thought, well, I'm going to go, I'm going to knit a size three and see what that looks like. And really, even though you can't tell here, this is the four. I really like the size four, US four fabric better. So now it's like, do I want to totally rewrite that pattern? Because I think it is a US 6. 
I know I would have to go up. Probably, I would normally probably nip for myself like a small. I would probably need to go up to like and follow the large, I think, in order to fit me. Anyway, I'm not sure what I'm going to do now. This is, oh, I had the tag in here that I bounced it out on the way up. I will write what it is because honest, in all honestly, I, I know that it is Zooey, Z-O-O-E-Y, and it is, I can't remember anything else, but this is like the color. It's a color I like on myself. I like neutrals. I like middle-aged beige, right? Anyway, still not sure about that summer top that I really want to make. And I want to have it on the needles. As a matter of fact, my friend Becky and I are supposedly doing a knit along. She's already started hers. And it's a different top. We have totally different tastes. Um, but we thought we would do a summer top knit along. And no. I have it in this bag, though, from Low Lamb Originals. I have several of her things. She is in the Netherlands, right? Beautiful bags, like really lovely bags. That's her tag. All right, what else do I have to tell you? I guess I have a couple of things. One I wanted to show you, I was asked about the lavender that I buy and I will tag it as well in the show notes down below in the more. I've already asked this now that I think about it. Do you guys, would you comment and tell me where you're from? I'm curious as to see where people are watching from. Like I mentioned that Lynn is, I believe in England. Hello, Sophie. And um, I just like to know where the viewers are coming from. I'm super curious. This is the lavender that I buy in bulk. It is actually, I think, fairly inexpensive. There are lavender fields all around where we live, especially across the Puget Sound in the Squim area. And I think we're going to be going there quite soon because John has family over on the peninsula and an uncle that lives there that needs some help. So we're going to go over and help him. Anyway, there's lavender fields over there that are absolutely beautiful. I don't even like the smell of it. But since I was blessed with COVID two and a half years ago, I still don't have much of a sense of smell. So it doesn't bother me as much anymore. And I don't like moths. I actually like this better than moths. So this is the lavender that I buy. And then another thing that I do is, and I mentioned I have these little cedar chips that kind of I have hanging out, sitting all over. And, you know, again, I can't smell it, but after a while, they do lose their scent. So I buy this product, which is another one I can link below that I get from Amazon. And it's called Cedarwood, and it's very potent, actually. Um, and it comes with an eyedropper. And I just drop on these when I think they need a reload. And I have them sitting all over the vault. I have them sitting in... Um, the breathable containers that I have some of my sweaters in, in the, in my closet, in my bedroom. And, um, anyway, so far so good. It's working for me. Just want to show a couple of things then that I purchased this week real quick. I was at Joann's and they have, at least my Joann's has a new, line that they were just actually hadn't even put it out. I was talking to the lady about um, something else. And she said, you know, we have this new line and she come out with this container or it was like a setup for the store with these in it. And I love the color and that's like perfect. It's kind of to me between like a aqua and a greenish bluey kind of color. It's called sage, it doesn't look like sage to me. I mean, that, that really is a good depiction of the color. 
It's called Sage and it is uh, by Peyton's. It's linen, it says, but it's actually 65 cotton and 35 linen. But because it is a, I'm guessing a finger ring weight, that's what it feels like. Um, ba -dum, ba -dum. So number three, light, I would say very light, three. But I got enough to hold it double to make another summer tub. And I have no idea which one, but I thought I bought four skeins of it. It has how many yards in it? It's 100 grams, 3.5 ounces, 275 yards. So it's still going to give me 525-ish yards if I hold it double. And that's plenty for a little tank of some sort. Um, or even, I'm not sure I about a little bralette, but some sort of little cool summer top that I have no idea what it's going to be. Because, you know, you just buy yarn. And a couple of cute little pieces of fabric I wanted to share that they had. Um, because we are campers, like I said. We have a fifth wheel. Camped our entire marriage and before that. This fabric, how cute is this? The little trailers the canoe and whatever that that's a little tim, we call them timber tigers but it's a squirrel by the campfire he's having a marshmallow how cute so with this i think i'm going to make uh pillow covers to put on the sofa in the we call it the land yacht it's our fifth wheel my husband named it the land yacht And then they also had this, which I also found quite cute. It's folded oddly, but you get the idea. More little trailers, signs to the cabin, lakes, campfires, picnic tables. And I think I'm going to make, um, I call them boxy buckets. I don't know what the real name is. I don't even have one sitting here. Normally I do. I'll try to have one next time to show. It's what I put my knitting in. And so I'm going to make a boxy bucket out of this to have in the fifth wheel in the lanyard. And then I could not pass this up because it's all about nurses. Coffee and scrubs, band-aids, you know. The only thing they didn't put on here is a deck of cards. Oh, that griped me when that happened. Yeah, 12 and a half hours on your feet running like crazy and you haven't had a chance to pee or eat. We don't play cards. Okay, one flashback and then I'm done. So this is going to take the use of my phone to describe to you. This was in 2015, I believe September or October of 2015. I was knitting the... I can't remember what it's called. I'll put it in here. And I was knitting it because Susan B. Anderson knitted it. Why wouldn't you, right? I knit the same exact colors. I was so excited. I got my wool from right here. It was Osprey wool. Did I have it on? I think I put it on. Oh, let's see. I did. Anyway got my wool. Same colors as Susan B. Anderson. And it's Louise is the name of it. Do y'all remember that sweater? Susan knit. This was before. Oops, I had the button down on. I was going to try and make it bigger. but Loved the colors. So this was the first block I did because I like to do that before I put a button band on so that it's, I can get it straight. I can count the stitches better. I think it just looks nicer. Oftentimes with the collar, I'll do the same thing. So I did that. I got the collar, got the button bound on, super tickled. And I'm thinking I had blocked it again before I was going to do the buttons. And I thought I'm going to put it in the fluff in the dryer really quick, just so that it gets a little more moisture out because it was a little wet and I was holding it and it was getting my clothes wet. And I couldn't wait to finish what I was doing, of course, because why would I? And get a call from my husband. And the first thing he says is, 
I'm okay and nobody else got hurt. <laughs> and I was like, what? And this is the end of summer. I think it was September. If I remember right, I think it was, it was either the end of August or first of September and it had a super dry spell. He was clearing a piece of land. He had the fire truck there that he has, which is a huge, I don't know how many gallons, thousands of gallons of water with the hose on it and the spray. And they were following all the fire rules, regulations, the whole bit. So John was clearing this land and his truck was parked down the road a little bit. And he um, had one of his trucks come through and said, John, I think your truck's on fire. And he, John thought the guy was teasing him. He said, yeah, right. And the guy got a little closer and he's like, John, your truck is really on fire. <laughs> and so a long, very long story short, his truck was on fire. It had a short from the battery to the diesel tank in the back that he hauls diesel in to fuel his shovel with. Somehow or another, and it caught on fire, and he had just filled his diesel tank with 250 gallons of diesel that morning and hadn't put any in his machine yet. So he went down with the shovel to the truck, and the other guy that was working with him got down there, and the keys to the fire truck <laughs> were in the truck that was on fire. So all John could think of to do was start putting dirt on this truck. So this is the truck. This is the cause of the demise of Louise. That's one of his shovels behind. This was his truck diesel tank in here, full of diesel. This used to be the front of his truck. Shovel that he's literally pulled the hood off of the truck and started filling a compartment with dirt. You know, I mean, he literally pulled, there's a steering wheel. He was doing all that he could to insert that this fire wouldn't get away and catch the whole area on fire because it was tender, tender, dry. That's the cab of his truck. Luckily he had other pieces of equipment there as well. So, and another guy and yeah. So I haven't done a thing to Louise since. And I literally had to like think, where did I put her? try and stand up and put her on she felt it of course because I forgot that she was in the dryer because you know you get this phone call and you just lose all train of thought of what you're actually doing the sleeves where all those beautiful stitches were you know it messed up the color it just The pretty raglan increases that would have shown and been there. Oh my gosh, what a mess. Look at this. Just breaks my heart. I take it out still and I'm just like, oh. So, can I still wear it? Yes. Will I still wear it? I don't know. See how hard the sleeves are to get in now? I ended up putting the button band on anyway, but you know, I don't know. I guess it would be okay to put in the trailer, you know, to take camping. It would be definitely warm if it got a fire spark or something. I guess it wouldn't matter, but this is my Louise disaster. I've often thought about wanting to knit it again because I still love it. It's just a basic, you know, cardigan pattern. It had some nice little detailing there. And I want to match Susan B. Anderson. Who doesn't want to do that? Anyway, that is, I think, pretty much all that I have for today. Kind of ended on a poopy note. 
but it's kind of funny to me now. I look back and nobody was hurt <laughs> except for the sweater. Yeah, so I guess this is the tale of the demise of Louise. Well, I hope you're all well. I hope you have a great week. I think I mentioned it's Friday. I know I said that it's the 31st of March. I hope that you'll join me for the April vlogs. Um, I don't know how it's going to, I don't know. We'll see. I'm just going by the seat of my pants. We'll see what how it turns out. Um, but again, thank you for those of you that have made it this far. Thank you for uh, the returning viewers, especially for coming back and for the new people that are watching today. I hope you become a returning viewer to us here at the Boxerville Homestead as we swing into spring. And um, while it will primarily be about knitting, you're also going to see a lot of other things that go on here um, as spring starts to open up to us here in the Pacific Northwest. Looking forward to our last frost date, which usually is the end of April when I can put pretty much everything out then. So it, no appearances because they were all low today, Chance and Sophie, but I think they're looking forward to the ride we're going to take here in a few minutes. So with that, I will leave you nice, lovely friends of mine, and I hope you always will adopt and not shop because the life you save could be your very best friend. Take care. And I'll see you soon. So this is out in our, well, on our property. We have five acres. So we have a pond and every spring I look forward to the skunk cabbage. I know a lot of people don't like it, but I love it. I can't smell it anymore because I really lost the majority of my sense of smell. Chance if you get in that water and go swimming, you're on your own, dude. Um, with COVID, but anyway, our pond is really low right now. We're not sure why. Probably something up the stream a little bit, but anyway, I try to come out here every night, take the dogs for a walk. And this time of year, John always brings his trimmers and trim brush. We have trails that he's made out through here. Um, it's kind of fun walk through the dog. Did you get a did you get a drink, Sassy? Huh? Did you get a drink, Sophia? Anyway, beautiful day here. Like I said earlier, it's in the sixties.